Hi, my name is Maria Dorian, and today I am going to talk to you about how a virtual assistant can revolutionize your business. So thank you so much for joining me. I was absolutely blown away to find out that I had 895 people join my talk. That is a lot of people that are interested in everything regarding how to hire a virtual assistant and what a virtual assistant can do for you. So hopefully you learn something and you come away with you know new and fresh ideas on how a virtual assistant can help you in your business. Thank you so much for joining me. A little bit about myself. So I am a mother of four amazing kids. I ran a maid service in Austin, Texas called Welcome Home Cleaning. I did that for 14 years before I sold almost about two years ago now. It did really, really well. We had, gosh, I think like 22 uh, employees um, sold at an $840,000 run rate. I absolutely loved owning a maid service. Once we sold the business, um, we found ourselves as a family in a place where we had sold the business um, very quickly, actually. Um, I think it was on the market for like three days before somebody came along and uh, wanted to buy the business. And we were like, oh, we, we thought it was going to take a year. W what do you mean? Like literally like the ink on the contract hasn't even dried. Um, but sure enough, it sold and it sold very, very quickly. Um, and so once it sold, we as a family just we were we found ourselves in a place where we were free and we were free to really do anything we wanted and and go anywhere we wanted. So we sold everything we owned and we headed to Spain. So I currently live in Europe, which is awesome. Um, I also co-founded um, Quality Driven Software. I will talk a little bit about Quality Driven Software just because it's really such an epic piece of software and, and does so much. So very, very proud of that project. I am also head of support at Zenmade Software. Um, Zenmade started off kind of really that was sort of my beginning journey as a VA because once we moved to Spain I figured out very very quickly that I missed the maid service industry. I missed you know being able to talk to people every day. I missed problem solving. I missed you know just all the experiences that I had in my head. Um, I missed all of that and I, I thought you know maybe I should start a maid service in Spain but then yeah the language barrier I think you kind of have to speak Spanish a little bit in order to start a maid service and just you know the language barrier all the rules all the regulations I was like you know what forget it so I thought what could I do from Spain to earn a little bit of extra money and that's actually how VA was born and that's actually how I got my first job at uh, Zenmade Software because I remember calling Chris and I'm like, yeah, I think I want to be a virtual assistant. Like, is Zenmade hiring? And I don't even know if I knew Chris at the time, but he took a chance on me and gave me a job and it didn't take long before I was head of support. And so, yay. Um, from there, I... Oh, I got a phone call from the owners that, uh, the new owners of Welcome Home that bought my service. And they said to me, so we, we watch you on Facebook and we know that you have time. Would you be interested in helping us with virtual assisting? And of course, I'm like, oh, absolutely. I would love to do it. And nobody knows that business better than I do because I created it, right? Yes, I will absolutely be your virtual assistant. Um, from there, it didn't take very long before I picked up my second client and they referred me and really honestly from there it is it's been a very very fast growth I, I it's it's actually been amazing so uh, that is a little bit about myself um, I'll talk to you a little bit about virtual uh, assisting here for the rest of the presentation our topic is how hiring a VA can revolutionize your business so how hiring a VA can revolutionize your business I'll take you by the hand to answer all things virtual assistant related and everything that I learned from running the fastest growing virtual assistant agency in the maid service world. So if you're wondering what can a VA do, could I even afford one, 
My friend is a stay-at-home mom. Can she be in a VA? In other words, is it better to hire a dedicated agency or can I hire my sister, my mom, or my friend who really could use the extra money? And finally, I'll talk to you about how hiring the right virtual assistant can transform your business in really exciting ways. So what is a virtual assistant? Believe it or not, I actually still get that question quite a bit. Um, VA for short. So a virtual assistant by the definition is a remote assistant who provides technical and administrative support services. They could be both male and female and located all around the world. It is definitely a hot topic. Um, our world of online has just kind of revolutionized the way we do business. So what can a virtual assistant do for you? So what can a virtual assistant do for you? So they can handle incoming calls, customer service, and on the customer service front, that's gonna include the complaint calls, the sales, those rescheduling requests, um, you know, the call from Mrs. Smith who wants you to make sure to do an extra great job on the inside of her oven on the next visit. It's also going to include the quote callbacks and that's going to be, you know, your Facebook, your Google advertising. It will also include handling those time sensitive tasks where the clock is ticking and almost an immediate response on a quote is, is really mandatory. So that's going to be your chat box on your website, your Yelp quotes, your Angie's list, your top twos and home advisors and things like that. A virtual assistant can also handle your teams, and that's going to be all of the little things that are going to tie you up all day long. Things from, oh, we're at Mrs. Smith's house, and her key is normally under the mat. Well, now there's no key. Her, you know, door is locked. What do we do? Where do we go next? Um, hey, my vacuum is broken. Help, what do I do? Can I use the clients? Okay, now we have to call the client to ask for permission to use our vacuum. You know the types of calls that you get every single day that take, really doesn't take a lot of time when you realize it, but all those little things add up to really, really big things throughout the day. They can obviously handle email, invoice and payments, um, taking credit cards to run against the open invoices. Um, one of my favorite things that some of our VAs do for their clients is to ensure that accounts receivable number is kept really, really low. Um, in my company, in the maid service, uh, we never we made it a point to actually never go above three thousand dollars worth in outstanding um, accounts receivable. So what that did is we always had a really healthy cash flow. I never had to worry about oh my gosh, how am I you know going to get through next payroll? I don't have the money. Do I actually need to you know take out a loan for payroll? The key to avoiding all of that is keeping AR low, which means having somebody that is dedicated to collections and making sure that invoices are always charged, that checks are being put in the mail when Mrs. Smith hasn't paid twice in a row. You know, we're calling Mrs. Smith to say, you know, we love cleaning for you, but you got to pay us. Uh, let's see what else could they handle. They can handle payroll, uh, quality driven software. So let's talk about that a little bit. So one of the things that they could also do is internal quality follow up. And so what that means is, you know, when you have a client that is thrilled with their cleaning, which you can survey your, your client through quality driven, um, you ha can have your VA call the client to say, um, oh, Mrs. Smith, so happy that you were happy with your last service. Thank you for that five star review. Now, since we have that five star review and we know you loved your cleaning, is there any way that you can give us um, a review on Yelp, Google or Facebook? The virtual assistant can also call all four stars to say, hey, Mrs. Smith, I see that you rated us a four on your last visit. A four is really, really good, but we're aiming for a five. So what could we have done different to earn that five star review from you? And what do we need to change going forward so that you're not just happy with your service, you're actually thrilled? They can also follow up with failing scores. So usually that's a one or two. And what that would look like is, okay, obviously on if it's a one, uh, something went really, really wrong with that cleaning. And so now somebody needs to call that client to say, Mrs. Smith, 
you rated us a one. Something went horrifically wrong with your cleaning and we need to fix it. On the ones and twos failing scores, obviously giving that customer a chance to just vent and notify someone who has control to fix it of the issue is going to be really important because you've got, you know, a person who's angry over their cleaning, all that pent up emotion, it's got to come out somewhere. It'll usually come out in a really nasty Yelp or Google online review. So definitely have your um, quality, your uh, VA follow up on those uh, quality driven scores. Um, and the same kind of concept with non responses. Um, if you have a client who, you know, you've done four or five cleanings for them and you notice that they're not responding to their survey that's a really good opportunity to have your virtual assistant pick up the phone and say mrs smith either one you're not receiving those surveys or two mm, you're not really happy and so you don't really kind of you know want to tell us what's going on so what's going on why haven't you responded to those surveys um the key on that is never assuming that no news is good news your virtual assistant can also um, post social media posts on you know, Facebook, your Instagram. Um, they can also help you with automations. They also can help you learn new softwares and implementation. So in my company, um, one thing that I use my uh, virtual assistants for is research. And actually the last time we did that, we had to research a brand new clock in and out company. So uh, the platform we were using, it just got way too cumbersome. You know, we've got almost 20 virtual assistants now that, that work for us. Yeah, we needed a new solution. So we had a couple of virtual assistants, you know, research what is the best clock in and clock out solution out there. Obviously, you know, they spent a lot of time and, you know, at the end of the day, we ended up not choosing any of those, but that is a task that if I had to have done that on my own, first of all, I probably would have been distracted, but second of all, it might have not have gotten done. So your virtual assistant can also help you with email blasts and the hiring and the application process. Um, you, If you hire for your company, you know how time consuming that could be. So give it to a virtual assistant, tell them what you're looking for, have them go through all those applications um, and have them help hire the right person for your company. How do you know when you're ready for a VA? So lots of things to consider. Um, cost is usually on everybody's mind, like what is a virtual assistant gonna cost me? Um, everybody's gonna charge different, whether you're hiring an independent or whether you're going through an agency. Um, so it's really no different than a maid service. You have you know big companies that don't charge a lot and then you've got little you know, individual um, solopreneurs that charge, you know, an arm and a leg for their services. So one thing for sure is never assume that you can't afford one. Do your research, ask, you know, the big companies, ask the medium companies, ask, you know, the independent um, virtual assistants how much they charge. And it might be more affordable than, than you realize. Um, your current size. So you may be a startup um, without even a launch date or you just open your doors. Um, or you might be a, a huge business. Your size is honestly going to dictate um, whether you want a virtual assistant and if that's a good solution for you or not. Um, you'll also want to consider the time that you spend in your business. Um, and that's going to be pretty important if you already have everything set up. You have your office managers in place. Maybe you have a field manager. You know, maybe you don't spend a lot of time in your business but feel like it's it's really running well, you may not need a virtual assistant and, and that's okay. You should also definitely consider what you want your end goal to be. And so what I mean by that is you might be in a place where it is really, really important for you to just do the work on your own. It is never a bad thing for you to kind of roll up your sleeves and you know, get in there, get in there with the staff, you know, answer phones, clean some dirty houses with them. Um, obviously, you don't want to do that. You definitely don't want to stay out in the field. But, you know, if you're in a place in your business where those things are important, then you might not need to hire. 
Uh, and also, you know, take into consideration that if you happen to be somebody who, you know, wants to be very free of their business, um, hiring a virtual assistant may be the perfect solution for you. Um, with different things to take in consideration, always take, take into consideration like your own workload, making sure that, you know, you're not getting burnt out because you've got too much going on, you're too stressed, you know, stretched thin, all of those good things. Um, for a large established company, you might decide that your office manager is getting, you know, is wearing a little bit too many hats and she's starting to, you know, slack on some things. If those types of warning signs are going on in your business, it really might be time to hire a virtual assistant as a solution. So, of course, I have personally seen what a virtual assistant can do for companies. So I say, don't go gray and hire a VA. I know, it's cheesy. But at the end of the day, like I already said, those small tasks that you do every day, um, you know, from a lower level, dealing with those broken vacuums and those call-outs and those lockouts, they add to a lot of time grabbers. Um, at the end of the day, they may seem really insignificant, but they will, in the long scheme of things, um, hinder your productivity and your creativity. So the other thing is if you don't like to do certain things, um, if you suck at certain things, sorry, I probably shouldn't use that word, but there's no ifs, ands, or buts. If you struggle with certain tasks, if you don't like doing certain tasks, hire it out. And that includes things like sales and dealing with employees, dealing with customer complaints. Um, I don't know, nobody likes to do that, right? Dealing with those hard situations. A virtual assistant can actually be the perfect solution for you. Um, when I was running my maid service, honestly, I only wish that I had thought of hiring a maid, I'm uh, sorry, a virtual assistant. And that is because there were so many projects that I'm like, oh, it would be so cool to, you know, get my drip marketing or get that infusion soft going. But I don't even know how to do that. Like I, I don't have the mind for this stuff. And sometimes I try to do it on my own. And sometimes, you know, yeah, it'd work. Um, sometimes mediocre. And sometimes I'd say, ah, forget it. Like I can't do this. And then I'd give up and, and the project didn't get done. And that is actually kind of it's kind of tragic because all I had I known that there are people all around the world that are good at this stuff um, that can get it done really very easily. Oh my gosh. I, I honestly I, I swear in my own mind I could have grown leaps and bounds and you know, and really, really done well with my maid service. I did pretty well. Like I said, 840,000 run rate, not too shabby, but I'm very positive I could have hit that million dollar mark. Um, so don't go gray, hire a VA. Um, one other thing that I wanted to tell you super quick um, is that people do um, hire VAs to deal with those complaint calls. And let me tell you, that is, you get the right person to answer that phone and to deal with those angry clients who can, they know what they're doing, they can talk them off the ledge. That in and of itself is pretty mind blowing for a maid service owner. Um, everything from, you know, the right person can stop that client from canceling service or they could stop that client from going on Google, Yelp, and Facebook to leave you, you know, a really nasty review. So anything that you don't want to do, that you need help with doing, um, or that you're not good at, hire a VA. And the really cool thing is that will free up bandwidth to do the things that really matter in your business. And at the same time, help you to get your personal time back. So a lot of people might think, well, I don't need a VA, like I already have an office manager. So there's some pros and cons to an office manager. Um, an office manager is absolutely great for a company in terms of the, um, the social aspect and the driving force to a company culture. That's a little bit harder to do with the virtual assistant, but you know, obviously a virtual assistant who's not sitting in your office every day and talking to your staff, 
but from someone, again, who has a whole lot of virtual assistants under their belt, I can tell you that it can absolutely be done. So an office manager, you know, you, the other thing is you have to have an office space for them. You might have to handle their payroll taxes. Um, and an office manager can fall into the same trap of dealing with all of the day-to-day. Um, the nice thing about a virtual, I'm sorry, an office manager is that they can jump in the field. When you get short staff, somebody calls in, that they're there, they're available. But that can actually be a con too because if they're doing that too much, now all of those projects and the creativity, the brain space, it's gone. You're, you literally no longer have somebody who is helping you to drive your business. Now you have somebody that is just stuck in the vortex of the day to day. So cost is a major um, question that we get. So how much will a virtual assistant cost us? There's obviously like a maid service, different, um, you know, you've got different variations. People charge differently. So a freelancer um, typically will charge, you know, by the hour. Sometimes they require a payment up front before the hours are actually working. For, so for example, what that looks like is that might, they might say, hey, look, you know, pay me $1,000 and I will give you you know, whatever, 350 minutes worth of work. Um, a contract is usually needed. An agency, sometimes they have the pay up front model, sometimes they don't. Um, many agencies will bill at the end of the month and some will bill before the clock even starts. Um, sometimes they have you pay weekly and sometimes there's a contract and sometimes there's not. Um, with our company, no contract. Uh, at all and you pay at the very end of the week for only hours that you know or that you actually use. So is it better to hire an independent virtual assistant or is it better to go with an agency? So I'm not going to really deep dive because in my viewpoint, there's actually a lot more cons with hiring your own assistant than there is with going through an agency. So when you hire a personal assistant, it could be a friend or a family, a referral, it could be someone through you know Craigslist or Upwork. Um, and there's lots of different pros for hiring your own person. Usually you've got a little bit more of an intimate relationship. Um, you can find a rock star. I know many of you guys probably are um, familiar with Courtney Wisely of Zen Maid and Rescue My Maid Service. So you may not know how she came on to the Zen Maid team. Um, that happened because Amar happened to uh, find her on Upwork and hired her her as his virtual assistant and then she kind of came on the team so you definitely can find rock stars you know by going to those platforms um, you can also find you know go through a lot of not so good people um, but to me there's a lot more cons so everything from the lack of accountability um, you have to manage your virtual assisting you know if they ghost you which is really common these days and really, really sad. I, I hate that kind of a side note. But, um, you know, if they ghost you, you literally have to start all over. There might be expectations of hours. Um, and then there's the interview process. The interview process could be really, really long and cumbersome. So I remember um, having to hire a virtual assistant for a project that I did. And, oh my gosh, I put out one ad. And little did I know that I would, I think we got like 800 and something applications. It was absolutely epic. It was like, uh, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do with all the, with all these applications? So, you know, it was everything from reading just one C, one resume that I'm like, this looks good. And then you learn, you know, you go to the second one and, oh, that one looks good too. And then after 10 minutes, they all look the same and you can't tell one from the other. So the process could be really long and tedious it's a million back and forth questions it's finding the time you know to interview the candidate um, fielding the questions um, as they come up even before the interview like i said you're bombarded with resumes and then you know you are left to kind of your own judgment calls on candidates and 
for someone who doesn't have experience in hiring a virtual assistant, that could be not such a fun lesson to learn. And I'll give you a really good example. So before we got really, really good at hiring virtual assistants, because obviously now, you know, we've gone through probably hundreds of applications. We've gone through hundreds of interviews. We know what to look for and we can quickly narrow it down, usually within five minutes of a phone conversation. But that took a lot of time to hone in on those interviewing skills. So we made a really big mistake um, with a virtual assistant that we hired. Um, we'll call her Melissa. So Melissa had an amazing, amazing resume. She had 25 years of um, office experience. She, all of her correspondence was perfect. She had, you know, a little picture and, and everything was great. Um, and she actually worked for a law office that worked for Oprah Winfrey's company. So we're like, okay, this is going to be like our top star virtual assistant. The interview went great. She was super friendly. So we hired her. We were like, she is going to be awesome. And she wasn't. And I'll tell you why. Because even if we thought that her resume was great, her interview went great, she did not have the proper skills to be successful with the maid service. So you have to have a certain personality, you have to have a certain skill set to hire a really good virtual assisting. We're kind of like a breed of our own. So someone that is very clerical, very technical, um, no warmth is not going to do very well in the maid service world at all. They just won't do well with your customers. You know, when people are mad, you kind of need somebody to be able to talk them down and coddle them and things that, you know, things like that. And, and she was amazing, um, but she, she just wasn't a right fit. So, you know, there are skills that you will have to learn if you want to try to hire on your own. Um, another challenge is, you know, if they quit um, or if they're sick, um, you know, vacation, life change, then that workload goes back to you. Um, an agency has huge advantage in that in those scenarios, they can quickly find and and train a replacement, usually sometimes within even a day or two. Um, so a virtual assistant agency can definitely help fill in those absence gaps. Um, the other plus around the agency model is that an agency is going to be really good at training for, you know, the things that are needed, the skill set that is needed for our cleaning business. Um, we've also invested just a lot of resources to make sure that those VAs are performing at their best and helping the maid service grow and thrive. So that's also, you know, that's that's going to be important. Usually when you hire your own virtual assistant, um, like your private freelancer, then all of those training things, you're going to have to train on your own. So if you hire your own, um, like I said, you can find amazing freelancers out there, but the time that it's going to take you to find that person, just be ready for the time. In fact, it will take you so much time that when you're in like knee deep in applications and, and emails and all the resumes, you're literally going to say to yourself, I need to hire a virtual assistant to help me with this process. And nobody has time for that because you're too busy running your maid service. So why I think an agency is ideal, um, one call to the right company and you're done. And that's because a properly trained virtual assistant service um, is going to be specific to what you need in our industry. Um, your virtual assistant is going to have the support they need. You know, obviously the training will be taken care of. We'll be able to keep them accountable um, and keep them working and busy because that's another thing about um, hiring a freelancer is if you don't keep them working, they probably won't be able to, you know, keep working for you. So chances are you're going to lose them just, you know, to somebody that can give them more hours. So when you have an agency, usually we've got, you know, a good amount of clients and different kinds of tasks where we can help fill in those hours so that, um, you know, they can stay happy and, and not go to, um, you know, to a different agency or, or find something else and thus leave the business owner back with, you know, back with their workload. The other thing that, um, 
kind of made reference to a little while ago is that just because you know we've done this so much when I say we I, I mean you know virtual assistant agencies we've done the hiring we've seen the red flags we are really keen on looking at a virtual assistant you know within a couple of days and going there's already red flags there this is not going to work for that business owner um, and so because we can watch out for those things many times we can spot them quicker than the maid service owner can and a phone call saying hey you know what we I already have some concern about, uh, about this virtual assistant can we do something else um, before we get to you know deep knee deep in the relationship um, and do we make mistakes? Oh, absolutely. I already told you about one mistake that we made. But again, because we're hiring and we're training all the time, we're getting you know really, really good at honing in on all of those skills to bring the maid service owner the right VA. So now you've decided to hire a virtual assistant, whether that looks like a freelancer, like a private uh, virtual assistant, or through an agency, or um, it, you might have hired a virtual assistant to help your current office manager staff. So I did promise that I would tell you how a virtual assistant can revolutionize your maid service. Well, I'm going to tell you a really, really cool story. I love this story and it just happened. So it was like the, the perfect time for this. So um, one of our clients, um, Dan Smith of Homemade Better, I think it was maybe two to three months ago now, um, shared with me that his um, business wasn't growing. Like he'd been in business for two, three years, don't quite remember. Um, but one struggle that he had is that he couldn't get past a certain revenue and he couldn't get past nine employees. And so we kind of honed in on the nine employees. And so he's like, every single time I hit the nine, you know, I'm thinking that I'm going to add that 10th and then something happens and we go back down or they'll hire their 11th and then they go back down to nine. So that was a really huge struggle. So I kind of shared with him one idea and I was actually really pleasantly kind of shocked and surprised that he actually did this. Um, and I found out after the fact. So what I told him is, all right, we kind of need a strategy here. So you have nine employees, right? So we have to make sure to keep those nine employees happy. Let's make sure that the nine are happy. And so what I told him is, you know, do like a week long employee appreciation week which he did. So I don't know what that looks like, but you know, Monday they did something, Tuesday they did something, you know, Wednesday maybe lunch and Thursday maybe ice cream day, whatever it is that they did. Um, they had their employee appreciation week and him and his office manager, Tamara, kind of put that all together while the VAs did their thing, which was, you know, answering all the phones and scheduling and doing everything that, that we do for his business. So I am so happy to report that earlier this week, I happened to log into his account for something and there were 12 employees sitting there and I'm like, no way. Like he did it he did it he got past that nine employee mark and he i called him and i'm like dude like this is huge and it actually brings kind of tears to my eyes because oh my gosh it's like there you go like it just worked the process just worked and he you know he went on to share with me how um he'd never been able to get i think it was like 32 36 000 past that point um and now he's about to do like a fifty thousand dollar plus month and Oh my gosh, I love that story. And one thing he said to me that really kind of cracked me up, he goes, in other news, I've traded my concern regarding not enough text for the replacement worry of not having enough work. Laugh out loud. So that kind of cracked me up. But really, honestly, having the right people in the right seat is going to be key to revolutionizing your maid service. So now that um, you have 
all the right people in the right seats, again, whether that be your office manager, you know, with a helping VA, or maybe no office manager and you've got virtual assistant or virtual assistants running all your day to day, what are you going to do? So we already know you're gonna get your personal time back, which is awesome, but you're also gonna get your productivity back and your creativity because when you're bogged into the vortex of the day to day, you just can't be creative. You just can't, you're too stressed. You're you're just too stressed. You're all your brain um, bandwidth is going toward just solving your day to day. That's nowhere. That really, honestly, is no way to run a business. Um, the maid service business can be fun and dare I say stress free, but the right things need to be in place. Um, and so now that you have help, there are so many things that you can do. And I'll give you some ideas. So systems. You cannot grow your business without prosper, uh, proper systems and processes. And so what that means is it's actually kind of simple. So I always recommend that when something goes wrong, write a system for it, write a process for it. And I always make it my goal that when something goes wrong, what could I do? What system, I always say to myself, what system or what process can I put in place to make sure that this problem never happens again? And I always think, okay, in terms of scaling, if I write a system or a process for my 13, 13 employees or however many you have, will that same system and process work if I have 50 employees? So, you know, just being able to think, okay, along those lines when you're not you know, bogged down from that day to day is gonna be huge in making sure that your day to day business runs really smoothly um, because you've written systems and processes. Um, you can also write your, um, your operating procedure manual that is always huge and super helpful to have. I've sold a maid service, so I always think in terms of exit strategy, one of the best things I was able to do is hand you know my potential buyer a big old notebook and and literally say to them, this has everything. Like if you don't show up, this has everything. Everything you need to know is is here. It's it's all documented. Of course, developing and tracking your KPIs, um, working on employee engagement. So like the one week employee appreciation week, that's huge. Um, working on things that are going to keep you know those employees happy and motivated to where they want to come into work and they want to do a good job for you every single day for years and years and years. Um, all of those kind of of really cool things could be done when you're not busy on the day to day. Obviously, marketing projects, um, fixing what's broken, working on the core values. So, anybody that knows me knows that I am absolutely love core values. I'm wild over core values. I will preach them to anybody that listens just because I know the value of and of what a core value does in your company. Um, before I implemented um, core values, um, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed, but then kind of not to uh, admit that before we had core values, before I even knew really what that meant, I had three different times in my maid service where I had full staff tell me, we're not coming in tomorrow. We are staging a walkout. I remember being on the phone, crying probably to Liz Trotter, saying, my staff's so angry at me, so disillusioned, my workplace is so broken that they're all promising that they will not come in the next day. Um, man, that is a horrible, horrible feeling to watch your door and go, okay, I, I've got 26 houses that I'm going to clean on my own today. And then you watch one employee come in. Okay. Me and another employee are cleaning 26 houses. Got it. And then the third employee comes in. All right. We're dividing 26 houses between three people. And then a fourth employee comes in. Okay, cool. At least now we only have 13 houses each. It is a horrible place to be. Um, what I found out is my staff, they they didn't know how to behave because I never taught them. So enter in those core values. Um, I found quickly found out um, through Liz Trotter's help um, that core values are basically what shapes and defines your business. What shapes and defines your business is you personally. So you really have to teach um, your staff how 
to behave and almost how to think. And once everybody kind of thinks and behaves the same way, which is going to be a kind of a mirror image of you um, with all of your values, that's when your workplace um, really kind of changes and becomes super happy. Um, in order to implement those core values, you do need a lot of time and you do need time to kind of study them and implement them and find out, you know, how to, what does every day look like with the core value? All of those things are super, super hugely important. And if you need help developing core values, you know who to call now because I can, I will talk my ear off on core values. Um, and in fact, obviously in our virtual assistant company, we have core values that we live by. Um, and implementation, implementation of new software that can revolutionize how you work. So lots of cool ideas for really neat projects that honestly, if you're too busy, you know, cleaning houses, if you're too busy, you know, out on the field, checking homes and putting out fires and running vacuums and, you know, helping Emily finish up her day because she's got to go home early to pick up her childcare. And in your mind, it's so easy to go, well, it's just one day. Well, the problem is if that, if you don't do something different, that one day is going to turn into two days. It's going to turn into a week. It's going to turn into, you know, months and months to where you're going to look at the fact that you are cleaning houses every day or answering your phones every day and your business, it's not growing. You can't give your employees more raises. Your profit, it's not growing. You're kind of stuck. And then you're looking at this thing going, God, I hate this business. It kind of sucks, but it doesn't have to be that way at all. I promise that you can absolutely get your business um, to a place where it's running, it's growing, it's thriving. You love it. You're free. You're not stressed. Um, in my maid service, I got it to the point where I came in once a week. And sometimes I kind of felt silly coming in once a week because the only reason I came in is just so that I can show my face to my employees in the morning, just to remind them, hey, I'm still here, I'm still alive. But really, they didn't meet, need me at all. And one thing um, we did a lot of is we traveled with our entire family. I often tell the story that we took all, you know, six of us to Australia and New Zealand for a month and a half. And in that month and a half, I heard from my staff one time, one time, because everything was just running and everybody had their place and all the systems were there and all the processes were there. And, you know, and the really cool thing is when you have your maid service running that way, your paycheck doesn't stop. So that's another really, really good, you know, bonus. Um, so in closing, um, your virtual assistant should be adding fuel to the fire that propels your business to grow to the next level while simplifying your life and your cleaning team's life. Um, I want you to be in a position where you have more hands at your disposal, where all of your cool marketing and implementation ideas and projects are done because you have somebody that's there taking care of all the day to day and making sure that all of the distractions that keep you from doing those really fun revolutionary things are completely off of your plate. So thank you so much for listening to my talk, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.